tried going hero. Uh, they all went villain. Realistic. And they took over the world. <laughs> and they took over the world, and the Reckoners are a human force that fights back. All right, so... So this is a completely unrelated to anything this meeting's supposed to be about. <laughs> Since it powers. is now seven, after seven o'clock, I guess we will attempt to uh, start. And I keep getting text messages, but my phone is okay. over here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we're on camera. No, nothing too important. <laughs> It was telling me that we're, we're live, so, and I'm not for sure if uh, anyone else is going to show up, but we will go ahead with uh, the presentation. <laughs> so, Abby and Wesley are covering our uh, screen here, so let's see if we can move that. Might be visible. Okay, well, hello there, Abby. Sorry. <laughs> 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 All right. I'll just cut off us for a little bit. So, silence, holy expectancy, waiting worship, or centered worship, those are all terms that this is called by. Um, it's a time where you can pray, listen, Contemplate, and if you feel led to speak, it is permitted, but there are buts. <laughs> if it looks. I can't see it. <laughs> Waiting. Let's see if I can make a screen bigger. Anyway. Waiting worship uh, requires some preparation, is what it's supposed to say. Oh, I see it. You do? Okay. Okay, there. Yeah. Yeah, ours, my uh, thing, the Zoom panel keeps covering everything. So oh. this is something that uh, John Woolman said. I'm just going to uh, do that for now. It's not bothering me if you can read it. Oh, you can see. I can't see it as a problem. <laughs> so John Woolman, uh, how many of, do you guys know who John Woolman is? I know I've never. It sounds familiar, but I don't. I don't think so. He was a pre-Revolutionary War Quaker from uh, New Jersey, or West Jersey, I think is what they said then. Um, he wrote a journal, kind of like uh, George Fox, that gave uh, what he did as a, as a friend. And early in his life, he was actually called into ministry, and he was the often seen as the most influential um, abolitionist in pre-Revolutionary War period of time. So, uh, oh wow! So he, uh, I do have his journal. If anybody wants to borrow it, I do suggest uh, reading it because it is one of the most profound uh, journals in all of, uh, Quakerdom. <laughs> uh, if you've read George Fox's journal, John Woolman's is better. So, oh my gosh. Um, it, it, it is, but, uh, um, he, I mean, when we think of the abolition of slavery, you know, the movie Amazing Grace talks mm -hmm. about William Wilberforce. Mm -hmm. uh, John Woolman influenced the guy that influenced him. So um, he was born in the United or in colonial America, 
and he died in England and is buried in England because he got smallpox while he is in England telling them that, hey, you need to stop this. <laughs> stop bringing Africans into the, the colonies and enslaving people. So, But this is what he wrote, and this is when he was about 12 is when he was when he uh, thought about this. He says, My parents, having a large family of children, used frequently on first days after meeting, which is Sunday, because they didn't use the worldly terms for the weeks, <laughs> because they were pagan, uh, first day after meeting, to put us to read in Holy Scriptures or some religious books, one after another, and rest sitting by without much conversation which i have since often thought was a very good practice from what i had read and heard i believe there had been many in past ages people who walked in uprightness before god in a degree exceeding any that i knew or heard of now living and the apprehension of apprehension of their being less stead steadiness and firmness amongst people in this age than in past ages often troubled me while I was a child. He thought this when he was 12. Okie dokie. <laughs> so, it's a, a little bit of a, I mean, I thought uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer made me feel like I was a bit inadequate, but woman is even worse yeah. so um so we 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 have to we need we should prepare not necessarily have to you can't force you to do anything but before we come to meeting we need to have in our mind already a heart and spirit set to worship and that's what he's explaining here so Although we do believe that Jesus or the Holy Spirit is our ever-present teacher and guide, we also believe that learning to discern the Spirit of God requires discipline. To recognize God's voice, we need to learn from others how they discern that voice. So, like with Elijah, he met, or there's a fire, an earthquake, a great wind, and he didn't sense God in any of that. It was when there's stillness that he sensed God and went out to worship. So we learn this by interacting with others as well as reading about it in Scripture and in other writings, like St. John of the Cross's poem and stuff like that. We can learn from that. It also requires discipline. So this is... Uh, also, John Woolman, when he was 16, <laughs> he says, wow. In one day, being under a strong exercise of spirit, I stood up and said some words in a meeting. But not keeping close to the, to the divine opening, I said more than, I was, than was required of me. And being soon sensible of my error, I was afflicted in mind some weeks without any light or comfort, even to that degree that I could take satisfaction in nothing. I remembered God and was troubled, and in the depths, depth of my distress he had pity upon me and sent the comforter. Then I felt forgiveness for my offense, and my mind became calm and quiet, being truly thankful to my gracious Redeemer for his mercies." actually need a translator for that for, to translate that to modern teenage speak <laughs> yeah modern teenage um, nah bro, <laughs> nah, bro. <laughs> I said too much <laughs> is basically what it what it uh, amounts to so <laughs> what it's showing there is that there is a great deal of discipline as well as preparation that goes into um the silent worship it's not just sitting silent and talking whenever you feel like it so the right. discipline is uh 
in, in this form of worship and our desire to encourage and to, to convince others, we, we want to speak. And we should speak. Because we're led to speak. But it can also be taken advantage of. And some likely cases is uh, some use this time to promote politics and political ideologies. Oh, yes, I'm number one. And uh, some might just want to talk so that they're seen as a weighty friend, which is what John was upset about in his quote, is he spoke, but he said too much. So he felt like he was trying to direct attention to himself instead of encouraging people to to look to, to Christ. So what would you say to him? If he uh, was your 16-year-old son and said, you know, Dad, I feel like I spoke a little bit too long and I take pleasure in nothing now for the last week, how, how, what would you say to that, your child? I would probably encourage him to confess it and to be silent again. Yeah. Um, later on in that quote, it, that's exactly what he did. So he, after he experienced the forgiveness of God once again he he reminded himself not to speak more than he was open to speak and and he also waited he said six weeks before he actually spoke again but he did speak again he spoke an awful lot <laughs> and he uh, <laughs> he uh, made a lot of people uncomfortable <laughs> so um, John is like I said read his journal it's probably one of the best journals that you'll ever read but he also when he is younger he for the fun of it killed a sparrow and he said he then saw that there was a nest sitting by where he threw the rock at the sparrow and there were chicks in the nest and he realized that he had caused those chicks to die as well because he killed their mother oh. and he then became very concerned with not just human but also all of nature around him we should take care of all that and not take not do things without thinking first so very uh he then had to he felt led to kill all the little chicks because he didn't want them to suffer so, not that that's a good thing to do, but uh, mm. it's a, it showed his compassion and his desire not to increase pain. And that led him also to his work in abolition. So, <clears throat> the discipline in this form of worship is to draw close to God first and foremost. And then the second part is to be, be, be obedient to God. And when we speak or minister in any way, we are to do it in unity with God. So, it's a, we have to be careful with our own selves. And that's why we have that flow chart in our, when, in our pews, and then I put it in our bulletin so that we can continuously check ourselves. Should I grab that? Nope, it's going to be on screen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> so, Ooh, ah. But a lot of what we sense during open worship is for us, and only us. It's God speaking to us and encouraging us and teaching us. And then occasionally it is something that we should share with the wider group but we have to continually um, ask ourselves if this is of God is it for me or is it for everybody or is it uh, some of the Friends United or not Friends United meeting general conference where they're much more liberal than, than the evangelical friends they'll often say is this of God or is this of NPR 
<laughs> which I think is the funniest of all scenes. Interesting yeah. way of saying <laughs> so okay. For conservative, more conservative politically friends, uh, it would be, is this of God or is it Fox News? You know, is it is it what I'm consuming media-wise or is this actually God? And that's why I say it's important to prepare for meeting. Is it, is it hard to know the difference? Yes, actually. Really? Yeah. NPR and and the reason it's hard is if you're only consuming news or if you're only consuming social media before you come to meet the meeting for worship, that's what's in your mind. That's what's in your heart. If you're consuming scripture and other spiritual writings, that's what's in your mind. That's what's in your heart. So sometimes they overlap, yes, but... You're, you are what you eat in a lot of cases. So if you're consuming news all the time, if all you're listening to are podcasts and, you know, Fox News or CNN or MSNBC, then that's what you're, what's foremost in your mind. And you can't quickly shut that off until, until you actually purposely shut it off. And that's why in, in, when I form all of the slides for Sunday, I put open worship after the message and all that so that we can spend that time shutting off the world and everything that was going on this week and prepare ourselves to be quiet. There are others that put the silence first so that if something occurs during the silence, then the pastor's message can be laid aside because the Spirit's saying more. Well, it's I like just, that thing says you're not supposed to say anything related to the sermon, so it kind of right. you know, makes it hard to... Because right now you're saying like you want to do silence after the sermon so that we have the sermon in mind right. when we're speaking, if we do, if people have to speak. This is a written by somebody in Friends General Conference where it's not normal, not, it's normal to have spoken words, but it's, uh, there isn't always a message being presented every week. So what that is saying is don't necessarily popcorn off of the person that spoke prior to you and response to or in defense of but let it stand itself um, like don't get into a, a prophecy battle or something right <laughs> so which does happen we're gonna bring up right now so <laughs> and it also it's encouraged that if somebody does speak let it sit for a while before you speak kind of letting that saturate through everybody's hearts and minds before the next message comes. So it's uh, <clears throat> awkward sometimes, and it sounds like there's a lot of rules. There really isn't. <laughs> but uh, you can definitely tell when people are prepared for meeting and when they're not because of what's said. And uh, usually it's political. So, in, in a lot of different places. Yeah. I guess I haven't heard any of that here, political stuff. At least, I know that, at least not since I've been here. Um, yeah, we've uh, worked fairly hard on trying to uh, prevent the political... We didn't always succeed, but we have... I, mean, I guess, like, like, the Bible says the spirit of prophecy is, is Jesus, right? Or something more or less. Um, so I, I guess I, I, I just don't see the, the difficulty in like navigating. Like, is this from God? Is this political? Like, am I pointing to Jesus? Am I pointing to mm -hmm. the gospel, to His finished work, or am I pointing to pointing to like some kind of ideology, um, like um, something I don't know, like NPR? I don't listen to NPR, so I'm not sure what, like, what you would want to speak to at church about, like, uh, were you speaking about, like, Ukraine or something? 
Well, I mean, the, that's, the that's where the overlap can be. Because yeah, you can... Like a peace, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you start talking about, like, peace or anti-war, I mean, that's... We know the love of Palestine. It's it's also, Palestinians. Yeah. Right, it's also political. So, I mean, there are people who say... Yeah. It's hard and peace. Yeah, there, there yeah, are it's overlaps. But if, uh, if that's all that you talk about, then, uh, yeah. you know, maybe in your own mind you could say, well, is this just my opinion about what's going on in the world today, or is this actually yeah. something that needs to be said? I just feel like we can have, like, grace for each other. Like, if somebody accidentally, you know, lets a little NPR um, <laughs> slip into their into their speak, I mean, I, I feel like we could, I mean, I, I think we know, like, at a point when it's becoming too much. Like yeah. somebody's saying like, uh, you know, we should all vote for Trump or, or Biden or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously that's like gone too far. But if somebody's saying like, um, you know, may there be peace in Israel with Palestine, with the Palestinians mm -hmm. and may they like, you know, uh, start living together peacefully. I mean, I, that I would be like, okay, I, I can, I can, allow that yeah <laughs> like yeah. I'll, I'll agree with that I'd like actual and peace as opposed to a simple ceasefire because ceasefire simply means you're giving the other side time to reload okay that's be now that's crossing the line Tracy <laughs> 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 so I question a wonderful example <laughs> go ahead Abby um I I hear all of this and I and I and I think towing the line is God breathe you know uh, because we have in in this Quaker faith, you do have this concept of equality, and so how do you weigh your your more political beliefs that are backed in this idea of equality? How do you how do you weigh that with your faith conviction? And, and that is a very good question, because, like I said, it does overlap a lot of ways. The couple of years ago, or when Joe Biden was uh, first running, he said, I don't let my faith dictate my policies. I'm like, that's a bunch of crock. <laughs> because right. if your faith doesn't affect how you live your life and how it's you do things, yeah. then you don't have faith. <laughs> it's not part of who you are. And that doesn't dictate what I think of Biden or anything like that. It's just he said it. And it's like, yeah, I don't think that's very accurate. You may right. not you may not use your faith and impose it on others, but it definitely dictates and influences how you respond to the world. And it should. But right. uh, but yes, it it's uh you can speak about equality, you can speak about peace, you can even speak about charity and stuff like that as long as you're as long as there's a ministry involved with it mm -hmm. so it's it's a like i said it's obedience to god if you're going to say it expect people to to watch you live it out because right. that's that's uh that's where we don't have any other outside ceremonies that can point to hey I'm a great Christian all you have is what you say and what you do so anyway we great answer we this week our evangelical friends mission gave us a nice devotional and just to prepare ourselves for open worship here I thought it would be good just to take their Tuesday reading and uh, kind of sit with that for a bit as we go into silence. So this is in the little book if you found it. If not, you can go to EFM's website and download it. It's in the description on YouTube if you need it. So, sorry Abby, I'm going to have to shut you off again. <laughs> of the screen no worries you just keep covering up <laughs> every 
I use too big of words. So what does it say is the topic on the devotional? So this is John 19, 25 through 27. And this actually does go into part of what we were discussing before. This is actually politically minded in some cases, but it's also in scripture. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene, everybody's named Mary. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. So, after you think about it for a while, just get comfortable in your chair. It's best if you have both feet on the floor because your butt will go to sleep. Mm. Um... <laughs> Get into proper position. Who am I, Who on the nose uh, there? Yeah. Uh, some people uh, will actually leave their hands up to receive. That doesn't matter. Uh, the main thing is to get comfortable and to consider your breathing first and then focus on what God's leading you to.
Anxiety as you entered into the silence and you hear the traffic. Does your mind go to the things that you need to do? show you anything. <laughs> Apparently Shawshank Redemption is one of the three. I just, yeah, I just, uh, I just popped my head randomly, so I, I feel like I need to see it. I don't know. It fits, though, like, doesn't it, with the scripture that we were reading? I don't know. I was trying to think, like, is, this, is that something to me? And for a while, I was like, I'm not going to say that. It's ridiculous, <laughs> but it just felt, uh, felt right, or felt needed to be said. Wesley's favorite movie or something. I was like, I can't remember the plot, so it's fun for me, but... Wesley said it's up there. Okay, there we go. <laughs> that was for Wesley. <laughs> Guy gets falsely accused, gets in jail for a long time, gets out. Not through legal means, but gets out. Yeah. So it went through my mind, of course, I, because I practiced I Lectio Divina, I reflected on the, the scripture, and almost immediately I could sense tightness in my chest and my breathing got harder because I started imagining the scene. And then I started focusing on what Jesus said. 
He's hanging on a cross. Every breath that he takes shoots pain from his toes all the way up to his, his head. Every breath is just scratching against the wood of the cross. And what's his concern? Mom and disciples. My mom. Mm. My mom's right there. She has no one. And what does Jesus say when he was teaching? When his family was saying, come on, you're crazy, let's get you out of here, let's put you in a mental institution, whatever that is in ancient Israel. Not a good thing, I would think that. Um, he sells the crowd, those that hear my voice are my mother and my, my brothers and sisters, my family. So he's there on the cross looking at his mother. And he's also saying that to each of us. You know, if we're his disciples, the one that he loves, which we are, we should take care of his mother, his family. And that was his concern while hanging on the cross. And that was kind of profound <laughs> to me. We actually went 15 minutes, almost 16 minutes. Chris did better than I thought he would. No, it's what been nice to, do? yeah, what do you think you're going to do? Combust? <laughs> Just walk over and bench you. <laughs> Just kidding. No, it's good to have a minute, especially when, I don't know, it's just nice to s slow down for one thing, and I feel like I had something meaningful for me. I don't know that I have, like, a specific words or things to yeah. share, but, um, I just yeah. try to get comfortable. <laughs> And that is uh, important. It's hard to get comfortable sometimes. I don't some know how you can't release your stress. sitting on a wooden cue back or a rock or just anywhere, you know, where there wasn't our creature comforts like padded seats, how they could sit for hours. Yeah, wooden pews, I think, just about the most uncomfortable piece of furniture yeah. we've created. So... Mm. I just felt completely like I was floating there, like everything disappeared. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I've popped a few knuckles. That's about it. <laughs> My youth pastor used to tell us that, that that the goal is to get to that place in between wakefulness and sleep. The dangerous line there. <laughs> <laughs> because it's in that moment where you are relaxed enough and you're not worried about things. Yeah. Your mind's shut off and you're able to to just listen. My sister understood that concept really well because that's when she would ask me to do things for her. <laughs> I got so many clothes stolen because she'd ask me during that moment between wakefulness and sleep. So during open worship, can I have your? Yeah, yeah. not not always during <laughs> open worship, but uh, occasionally. So we're so we about to compare this to when you're getting ready to fall asleep, and suddenly you have all these weird ideas in your head that I yeah. wouldn't normally think of. So, somehow it makes sense. Yeah, my dad actually will use this when he's having problems on the farm trying to figure out how to fix something. It works. <laughs> it really does sometimes. And he will get to that place where he's almost asleep, but you can tell he's still awake. And somehow in that moment, he comes up with a plan. And as That's soon as it's... really fascinating. I mean, I'm pretty sure your brain waves actually change, like during that 
that between time. They, yeah, um, they've um, actually like measured them on people before. Go ahead. You, they do. They actually have measured them before. I was uh, I was confirming what you said. <laughs> yep. Yeah, my sister's epileptic, and she uh, that's her trigger is right before she wakes up. Her brain waves are are super active, um, and that's what triggers her 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 seizing. But for I think mm -hmm. normally. <laughs> You know, not not necessarily that she's abnormal, but for a regular, non-epileptic person, I think that's a super active state to be in. So it would only make sense that this would be a very spiritually nourishing time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when someone's in REM sleep, that's they're actually thinking even more actively during that time than they are when they're awake. Yeah, and it's not saying that you need to sleep. No, it's not. But... It's just that. <laughs> But it's, it, it's a change of mind. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the word trance is in the Bible. So. It, it is uh, when you let go of yourself. That's the focus. You when you, there. you take a step back and you let God work in your life. And God shows you things. God tells you things. So, like I said about... Might see vision that I got might see not that it's a vision necessarily it was directed meditation at best but it changes how I look at things a little bit and hopefully it changes how I act Sometimes so it shows, shows you a solution you could not have thought before yeah it's really funny when my dad does that because uh, <laughs> yeah. he will be just ready to break something my dad's big <laughs> so he makes eric look small <laughs> wasn't, okay. it, wasn't that that painter who did the picture of the cross what was his name salvador dolly Didn't, wasn't that one of the guys who would you know um be about to fall asleep and fall on his easel and then he'd draw what he saw he was uh, famously uh i know drugs too but. yeah he he famously <laughs> would hold something heavy in his hand and have a metal plate sitting next to him and he'd hold this wrench or something heavy in his hand and sit until he got to that place where he almost went to sleep and he'd drop what was in his hand and then wake him up and then he'd get back to painting. So, and that's how so he would sleep. I don't suggest it. <laughs> Because you need a little more than that, but yeah, that's how he did things. Well, I hope that's not how he actually intended, attempted to sleep, but just how, how he painted um, things, he, I suppose. He, he uh, I, I wouldn't take life advice from Salvador Dali, but uh, <laughs> his paintings are good. Oh. I do like a lot of his paintings, but I'm kind of surreal myself, so. I think there's definitely something to that too as far mm -hmm. as Quaker Quakers um, this in part I do think there's something more to it though even something uh, mystical beyond just uh, changing our purposely like interacting with God and by mm -hmm. you know adjusting our, our own brain waves through um, some kind of spiritual practice like prayer or meditation I think, I think there's something even more um, mystical in, in just enjoying our union sleep studies on how people's brains work when they were asleep and it was very interesting on what they found there. Mm -hmm. So were you convicted of anything? Yeah, I was convicted to say Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> and now you're going to have to figure out why. Uh, I, don't, I don't feel the need to. I don't so, feel convicted to. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> Maybe it was just to or, or show maybe that, you know, like those of us that were in here, why did yeah. we may have to think about why was that the word that Eric was compelled to say? Now I'm gonna have to watch it. Well, it is quite a yeah. movie. Um, you know, maybe it's someone someone's gonna watch this down the line and be like, "That spoke to me, uh, the gospel in some way." Um, yeah. There's some kind of 
even for most movies, I mean, I've, the gospel's in a lot of movies, um, and I mean, getting saved from prison, that's pretty low-hanging fruit. Um, or, and I, I kind of feel like maybe some of it's, you know, like C.S. Lewis says, the serious business of heaven is joy. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, sometimes we, we take ourselves too seriously. Mm -hmm. And what, what if God just wants to play with his children? What if he just wants to play with us here? Um, in heaven quote, with God. Are we going to quote the movie Dogma now? I don't know that movie, but... <laughs> it's, it, it's a comedy. Dogma? It's a comedy about religion. It's not very religious at all. Let's put it this way. It's George Carlin plays a bishop in it. He's, it's very sacrilegious. Thing. It really is. And, um, By the creator of Mallrats and... Yeah. And clerks. <laughs> yeah, and they're in there too. Um, Kevin Smith. I don't know. God speaks to you, and it doesn't always make sense. Oh, um, more set sometimes it's just that. about about listening. When when you feel led to say something, sometimes you know maybe for me that was just practice. Maybe God just wanted to see if I would say Shawshank Redemption <laughs> for no apparent reason, and God's like, right on, dude, you did it. You, I I I appreciate that, and I'm happy that I did it too. Even though I, I see like no nobody like nobody you know no I know of apparent miracles mm -hmm. that I can see with my physical eyes right now, but um, other than just feeling like pleasure in, in Jesus right now, that's the that's the miracle that I'm experiencing right now. Maybe that's all that was for. And yeah. was it for me? Yeah. But it's also for all of us. It's not just for me. Like a miracle for one person is a miracle for everyone. Like the enjoying the pleasures of heaven here on earth, um, that's for everyone. And just dancing with God, you know, dancing with the Holy Spirit, just being willing to, you know, take take a step out onto the dance floor. It's sometimes all it is. All it is. That's a different song. During Any dancing. other last words before we <laughs> close our meeting for worship? There's actually a. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> offline, I'll say that. <laughs> Was it hard? Most of you have been among us for long enough that it shouldn't be too hard, but was it different than normal Sunday morning or first day morning? It was just yeah, long I enough. I think so. I think the extra time makes a difference. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. for me too, maybe even longer just because I like Tracy was saying, just getting comfortable or kind of your mind. Mm -hmm. It goes yeah. somewhere and then comes yeah. back. It goes yeah. somewhere and then comes yeah. back. And, and then that you takes a while. That's what you do with this more often. We will get longer. I just didn't want to no, overwhelm. Gonna, <laughs> so. I'm just saying that's the difference from yeah. Sunday. I feel like sometimes on Sundays my mind will go somewhere and then come back. Go somewhere and then it's done. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be. <laughs> I think maybe even the like just kind of situation of everybody kind of in a circle versus pews almost makes a difference. Mm -hmm. too, for some reason. Yeah, the pews but, were uh, actually yeah. a gift. So. Well, I just mean like. <laughs> yeah. The, so, well, I mean, I think it wasn't. It wasn't the original. <laughs> <thing. laughs> I'm saying. I'm saying it wasn't the original <laughs> thing on the set. The, <laughs> it, it, it works better if uh, you can see everybody. Yeah, yeah it wasn't the, the, pews faces the original. Faces rather so than. Can. Rather than the backs of heads. <laughs> so you're not wrong. <laughs> you're saying at the, all. The, the pews are a gift, so you need to. <laughs> You just need to They're not a gift to you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they were a gift. <laughs> oh, well, it actually says what. But you, what you actually bring up like something that. very important. Like that. That that brings up how we sit story. in a room together does change how we perceive things. Mm -hmm. Sitting in pews, what's our mind going to? Kind of what's going to happen next on stage, yeah. I feel like. You're, yeah. you're expecting me to give you something and you're just there to receive it it's less participatory 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 yes yeah we're it's getting more to of a give and receive type of thing where when you can see each other's faces hopefully your eyes are closed and your heads are bowed but but if you can <laughs> see each other's faces then uh you're cheating no, I don't you're <laughs> You recognize that I'm with everybody. And 
it changes our perception of everybody in this room just a little bit that they're willing to sit in silence with me and accept whatever I might say and you know I did pray for pretty much all of you <laughs> in that time frame because I felt it, it <laughs> came to mind <laughs> those that aren't here I definitely prayed for they needed the most because <laughs> oh it's not like we don't need because in, in my mind it was I was convicted that Jesus wants us to take care of his mom and those that aren't here why aren't they here what have I what have I what have I missed so that convicts me that I let somebody suffer alone, potentially. Are we talking so, about Abby and Wesley specifically? Yes, or? yes, okay. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so Okay, we're <laughs> sick. <laughs> no, no, it's it's okay. That wasn't necessarily what I was uh, about, but, reading uh, that. Back in the day, they did do these kinds of meetings specifically for physical healing. Like, they would sit together in silence expecting trusting for the purpose of Jesus mm -hmm. manifesting physical healing for people's bodies healing and decisions day. and lots of things yeah this is how a meeting for clearness to uh, see if the person that you would want to marry is the person that you should marry this is what they do and sometimes they ask you questions well, we're going to have to reassign they... somebody's wife based on what I heard. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, it just, uh, it's different. We're not the Moonies either. So, anyway, that's, uh, I think we've probably discussed enough. And uh, did you and Wesley have anything to add, Abby? I just, I can definitely tell, I mean, just through what you were saying that you were thinking about during the, the time of silence, like, this is a practiced thing. Like, it just took me so long to really center down um, that, you know, and I, I've done meditation before. This is not necessarily a new concept to me, but I just need to get into the practice of it. And I think that will help me get more out of it, you know? Yeah. That's where the prepare yourself for meeting comes in. Right. Because if you, when are the arguments, when do they happen? In your mind? In my, oh. in my family, it always happened right before we went to church. Mm. <laughs> when when my, my parents would have arguments right before we went to church. My That's wife and I will have arguments right before we need to go to church. Hmm. That's when Albert really wants to s dig his feet in and try to do something that he knows he'd better not to is right before we go to church. Hmm. It's, it is in some ways spiritual warfare because <laughs> that's uh, taking my mind away from what I should have been prepared for. Not that it always happens, <laughs> but it's when I recognize it more. I feel like so much of what I'm like doing day to day is like quickly shifting gears from one. Like I feel like that's like a major skill or task that is asked of me is like to be able to just like switch things. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this is like maybe challenging, right? To kind of slowly like mm -hmm. you're saying like prepare yourself for it rather than just be like okay time for this drop in yeah you know that is hard yeah so when i talked about george fox took his book of scripture into the field and prayed and that's when he got his heard the voice of god this is kind of what he is doing it wasn't exactly what he is doing because he's in a field but he had to prepare himself before he got out there and he experienced a lot so he had a lot on his mind but he was prepared for that that moment so we have a lot on our mind we have several things that we have to get to and it is just one of those things where 
working together and encouraging one another will help us center quicker. So, <laughs> a quicker, quicker, like quicker motto. Quick, center quicker with center uh, quicker with Quakers. Little Creek friends. <laughs> center quicker. <laughs> The quicker, quicker. Oh yeah, the quicker, quicker. <laughs> the quicker, quicker, quicker. quicker, quicker. <laughs> okay. So, okay. All right. It's we spent longer than I anticipated. So, uh, go in peace. And thank you, Gary. So, due to conversation we had after we had done the see you later, Wesley and Abby. Part, um,